This is Susan Wilbanks with BlendedInsight.com. I am an energy healer, an intuitive, and an integrative slash holistic wellness practitioner. In this podcast, I share tips, tools, and strategies that have helped me along my journey, and hopefully some of these things can help you along yours. Let's get started. Hello, Bright Soul. Thank you so much for joining me on today's podcast. For today's podcast with Father's Day around the corner, I wanted to talk about the father wound. The father wound is not something we hear about as much as the mother wound, but I do understand and know that it does exist. The father wound is essentially a deficiency, basically from the absence of love from your birth father or your caretaker, And it could be intentional or unintentional. This absence can be through divorce. It could be abandonment or even death. I mean, some people lose their fathers before they're born or at a young age, and it creates that void in them. It could even be if you have an addiction um, within the family and your father is presenting with alcoholism or drug addiction or something to that effect. It can make you feel as though you've got an absence of love from your father. A lot of times when children are young, they internalize it as, being something wrong with them or that they're not good enough for that person to get clean. When we know in actuality that it has nothing to do with anybody other than the person with the addiction, it's an internal issue. But you know, when we're young, sometimes we make it about ourselves. Even as adults, sometimes we do that. It could be from abuse, physical, emotional, mental, sexual abuse that happens and creates the father wound. It also could just be neglect whether the person is withholding love or is controlling or hard on the person or just ignoring the person. So all of these things can create the father wound inside of us. And men with the father wound don't know how to be fathers or partners. Unfortunately, in this day and age, most families experience some level of degree of this in some generation because it's so common now and we have a lot of single parents now where the fathers just take off and they're not there for their children and so those fathers grow up not knowing how to be fathers or partners they weren't shown how to love women as equal partners or they don't equally care for children maybe it was a patriarchal setup where the woman does everything and the man is just goes to work and does nothing at home I mean, there's all kinds of dynamics that play into this. Women with a father wound will often grow up looking for approval from men. So they may become sexually promiscuous. They may just overgive and end up attracting emotionally unavailable men and essentially replaying that wound in their adult years. And it, it can also result in trust issues where the woman doesn't trust men. So she ends up having a very disconnected relationship with men in her life, whether that's partnerships, friendships, father figures, etc. The problem with all of these wounds, mother, father, really all wounds from our childhood, until we heal it, we suffer and our relationships suffer, um, our children suffer. And the main thing that we want to do is heal it so we don't perpetuate the cycle. If you're a man with a father wound, you have to resolve to heal it and refuse to repeat that cycle. And the way that you heal it from my experience, this is just, I'm sharing things that I have learned that help. And through my healing practice, I see this a lot. And really what we want to do is just break the repeat of the patterns so that we can heal for future generations. So the way I suggest to heal it, or the way that I see that works, and you find what works best for you, I'm just sharing from my experience, my knowledge, what I know, is similar to the mother wound. First of all, acknowledging it is really good. A lot of times we hide by acting like things were all rosy and great just because we don't want to, we feel embarrassed or we feel like there's something wrong with us. So when you acknowledge and just be real about the experience, then you are open to healing it. And if you're listening to this, then you're aware of the wound and you're ready to heal it. So congratulations. The very first thing that I like to share with everybody, male or female, is we need to recognize, first of all, our fathers are just people. And if there's a father that's perpetuating a wound, chances are he didn't learn to be a father. That's really common. I mean, my daughter's father is absent. She definitely has the father wound. And I share this with her a lot. Uh, He is incapable. He doesn't really know. He didn't have a father. So and he's not choosing to learn. Now, I will say over the past few years, he's reached out a little And I, and I bring that up to her like, well, he's making a little bit of an effort because we don't want to sit and tell ourselves stories that aren't true. So when she says things like, oh, um, my dad um, doesn't really love me, I say, wait a minute, you made that up. 
because how do you know if he really loved you? Let's be clear about the facts. Okay, yes, your dad disappointed you. Your dad told you something that wasn't true. Your dad made a promise that he broke. Your dad says he wants to spend time with you. And when you go, he works and doesn't spend time with you. Those are facts. That's an experience. But you can't draw a conclusion that you don't know if it's actually true. So it's like, wait a minute. And and she's already used to me telling her when she makes these conclusions about herself, I will tell her you made that up. Your father is a he's a person. He's a wounded person. He's also a narcissist. We already know that. But let's just call a spade a spade here. He doesn't know how to be a father. But that doesn't have anything to do with you. That's his issue. You're still perfect, whole and complete all by yourself. And so First of all, it's almost like a level of compassion and forgiveness toward those that don't know how to be what we need them to be. The second, and this is one of the things that I teach my daughter, you have to recognize that the qualities that you may be yearning for in a father or a male figure exist in yourself because all of us have the yin and yang qualities within ourselves. Everyone has that, male and female. So what is it that you're looking for? Connection. So if you're looking for connection, How can you start connecting with yourself? How can you give that to yourself? Maybe it's protection. How can you protect yourself? Maybe it's strength. You know, sometimes it's attention. Maybe it's a a deeper fulfillment. Whatever that quality is, realize that that quality exists in you and begin to find ways to give that to yourself. When you realize and recognize that you are a whole, complete individual all on your own and that you are completely capable of meeting your own needs and and giving yourself what it is that you wish others would give you, you restore your power and it begins to heal that wound. The other thing is really having a deep understanding and knowledge that the person's behavior is not a reflection of you. You didn't do anything to cause it. You are loved, you are worthy, and you are accepted. This is not your fault. There's nothing you did to create it. And the other thing that I always say is find models of healthy men who have loving, connected relationships and learn from them. And that's especially true for men so that you don't repeat that cycle. For women, if you find that you're attracting uh, like male partners that embody those characteristics that you're wounded with, start to notice it. And then start to look for ways in which you can heal that in yourself so that you can align with a different vibration of a partner. And if you're with someone, like married to someone that basically rehashes all of those wounds in yourself, work on healing it and perhaps that person will shift. You know, we can't do the healing work for other people. Even if your father is still in your life and he still does those things that make you feel disconnected, it's part of going back to forgiving people because... Some people just don't have the tools to change and some people don't want to change. And that is their choice. We all have free will choice. And in those cases, it's best to just limit your interaction with the person if possible, because if they are just taking things out on you or rehashing wounds with you, it really isn't serving you very well. But the more that you heal it within yourself and don't take it personally, the more empowered you become and the stronger you feel and the quicker it is to shift. In my experience, this all boils down to feeling worthy. Because a lot of times, if we don't have that relationship with our father, and then we end up attracting mates, or maybe you're a father and you end up not being there for your children, or maybe you just can't hold a healthy relationship, oftentimes we end up thinking it's something is wrong with us. And at the end of the day, it just becomes comes back to us realizing you're worthy, you're valuable, and you're capable. You can heal this. Everything you wish in another person exists in yourself. You are strong. You can connect to yourself. You can protect yourself. You can take care of yourself. And you can begin to extend that to other people. We don't want to lament on the past. That's where when you become a victim. You go into victimhood. You can be victimized. Something happens. You're upset about it. You move through it. You process it. And you let it go. That's one thing. But when you lament over it and you just replay it over and over and over and talk about it, and this happened to me and that happened to me, now you're in victimhood. So now it's part of your story. It's a part of your energetic makeup and you're hanging on to it. So another thing you can do is just look at what has holding on to this wound done to serve me? How has it served me in some way? Because people hang on to it. It's almost like people like to connect with their wounds. 
you know, or they get in this um, wounded competition. So if someone says, well, my father died when I was young, you think that's bad. My father abused me or he did this. Like, I mean, really? Is that what we're doing? And I've even noticed in myself, not from a wounding standpoint, but I've even noticed in myself where people start saying how overwhelmed and tired they are and they have so much going on and they start listing off the things they've done. And I think what you're dealing with is like one fourth of my load. And I even notice it in myself that I compare and then I get a little annoyed, like, are you kidding? But what we have to realize at the end of the day is that we, we all came in with different soul lessons to learn. Some of us that came in to really up level, which chances are is you, we're going to experience a ton. And the more that you get on the healing path, you take on more of the spiritual journey and you try really hard to be conscious and clear things, the faster things come up. So it will feel like more happens to you and with you in a shorter time span because you are willing to move through it. And the only way we grow is through adversity and challenges. That's it. That's how you learn and grow is through hardship. So, you know, the, the faster that you get through it kind of depends on your level of openness and willing to do the work, the healing work. So let's just start to let go of the victimhood right here and now. Know that you can give all of those qualities to yourself. Forgive the person that did this to you because it has nothing to do with you. It's this them. We know hurt people hurt people. Wounded people wound, wound others. That's just the way it is. So the cycle stops with you. It ends today. Start telling the truth about it. Let go of the stories. And we're going to do an energy healing to help you to heal this in yourself today and know that you are perfect, whole, and complete on the soul level. As humans, we're not perfect. We know that. But your soul knew exactly what it was doing when it incarnated into this lifetime. Your soul signed up to heal some things, whether it's karmically or just to take you to the next level. And I personally believe Sometimes we go through things, not really for us, but so that we can show others who are struggling that we also went through it and we got through it. And this is what it's like on the other side. And we can extend our hand to help pull them along and help them to heal. Sometimes it's not about us. Sometimes we are just here to be the lighthouse for other people. So go ahead and uncross your arms and legs. And I'm turning the energy healing on. And for this particular energy healing, I am just going to flood you with beautiful healing energy. And I'm going to clean your spiritual cord so that you hear your direct soul guidance and know that you are connected and loved. You are whole and complete. You can give yourself everything that you're desiring in another person. You do not need to seek. And what's the one thing you can do today to start embodying the very qualities that you wish you had? You're an adult now, you're, you're a grown up and you can begin to take care of yourself. No need to keep playing out the old wound. Closing it up. Okay, and so it is. I wanted to mention that I have a forgiveness process that is available on my website. I will link it in the show notes. It might be really instrumental in helping you heal this wound. Also, I will be doing a healing for the father wound, and I will post it up on my YouTube channel. It's free, of course. So if you are not subscribed to my YouTube channel, please go over to YouTube slash Blended Insight. I will also post that down below in the show notes. So subscribe to my YouTube channel so you will be notified when that healing comes out. Also, thank you so much to everyone who has left me a review. If you haven't left me a review, please leave one on iTunes. You can just give me some stars, give me some comments. It helps so much. 
Also, I want to thank everyone who has booked a private session with me and has been so patient with my schedule. As you know, I was out of town last week and I'm trying to get everyone scheduled and I'm booked usually about a week to two weeks in advance. So some people will book a session and they get relentless about, can you do it today? Can you do it today? No, I can't do it today. (laughs) So I'm just telling you right here and now, you've got to be really reasonable. I'm a busy person. And when I bit, when I book private sessions, I take it so very seriously. I take time to, I have to meditate. I tune into the person so I can get into the energy field. I want to really get into a neutral state so that I can channel, especially if we're doing a reading. I take it really seriously because I honor you. I honor your time and I hope that you honor my time. I honor your financial exchange for the service that I'm providing. And so this is the type of work that you can't just rush through and just spur the moment do. I got to be ready for it. So I want to thank those that have been super patient. And those that haven't been, it's okay. I bless them and send them on their way. We're not a vibrational match because sometimes I'm a person just like you're a person. And I take this work very seriously. I always want to leave the person better than the way they were when we connected. So thank you again. And I wish you the best week. This is a really powerful time. We have another full moon coming up. Woohoo! It's the third strongest full moon of the year. Things are shifting and moving, and I'm just super excited for all of you. Let's just have a really good week. Let's go into Father's Day with a renewed sense of personal responsibility and fulfillment and protection and worthiness and love, all of those things that we can give to ourselves so that we go forward feeling empowered because you are sending all my love. Have a great week. 